Oh, today BK is making a killer hobby station. I had something like this in mind. And if you want one too, let's go. This is gonna be the first in a series of videos on this modular hobby station. So there'll be more details in this one than subsequent ones. Hopefully you can bear with me. I grew up on a heavy diet of sugary cereal, comic books, cartoons, and modeling glue. Now that I'm older and more mature, I've cut the sugary cereal from my diet, but can't quite quit the rest. Uh oh. Your attempts at humor bore me. I've got a long list of hobby projects that I want to get after, and I want to set up a space for maximum efficiency and organization. For inspiration, I look to kits like this one from Arty Station in South Korea, but I really like the modularity of this design from Hobby Zone in Poland, with each unit attached with magnets to the one adjacent to it. I knew right after watching Kevin Kennedy's Learn Fusion 360 videos that I wanted to challenge my skills by making my own hobby system. When I say challenge, of course, that's a very liberal interpretation because my designs are heavily inspired by the Hobby Zone products. That man's an imposter. That man is the imposter. It's said that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery that mediocrity can pay to greatness. So in this case, I will readily admit to my mediocrity. Looks like University of Illinois. I'm starting at the center of the workstation with this tall work in progress display. Fusion 360 has some sweet features for any makers out there considering it. Once I modeled up each of the modules, I used the drawing feature to make my own instructions. Then I used the align feature to lay out the parts in a flat pack design to act as templates. There's an automatic function called nesting in the paid version that does this more efficiently, but it's really pretty easy to do it in the free version. Sketches can be projected from these and converted to DXF files for laser cutting with only a few clicks. Now let's do this! This is the assembly sheet for this module and these are the templates. This one's in half scale, but we're gonna use an application called Big Print to print them out life size and make building these a lot easier. This is Smurfle, the shop cat. You can Google Big Print or go to woodgears.ca. This application comes from OG YouTuber Matthias Wandel. It allows us to print multi-page scale accurate images. To calibrate your printer, select Grid, check Horizontal Vertical, Customize. I'm going to set my grid size to 2 centimeters, selecting Show Grid and Grid Extends Past Image. Then select Print. Print settings. Now I can see the grid that I just set and I'm going to print it. With my grid in hand, I'll use a ruler as reference and measure 20 centimeters along the vertical axis. You can see here it's actually closer to 19.3. Then I'll measure along the horizontal axis. This one's also close to 19.3. To get the correct print scale, you take 20 centimeters divided by the measurement you just made and multiply it by 100%. Then you put the respective horizontal and vertical corrections into the print settings of Big Print. And now we're going to open the files. Here I'm just changing the grid. I'm adding some diagonals and changing the size so that I don't get confused with the lines of the actual template itself. From here, I'll click image and then calibrate distance by scale. And I'll just roughly put two ends of any measurement that I know the dimensions of. In this case, it's 300 millimeters. Now I'll zoom in on the image. And as long as the cursor gets close to the intersection of the, of the endpoint, I can grab it and move it exactly where I need it to be. Lastly, I'm gonna press image select, and I'm going to draw a box around just the part I want to print. And once I've got it where I want it, I'll press crop and print.
Long straight cuts are a snap with these paper trimmers. You don't have to cut out every detail because you'll be doing that with a saw after the next step. Okay, we've got a piece of quarter inch HDF. It's high density, high density fiberboard, not MDF. So it's gonna give you more structural rigidity. Because I'm making so many units, I know I'm gonna be using a lot of these components that are basically 150 by 300 millimeters. You can see all the dimensions are included on the uh, actual sheets themselves and you can reference the assembly sheet to make sure you're cutting the correct either quarter inch or eighth inch thick um, components. So in this case I'm going to try and set this up to efficiently rip a whole pile of 150 millimeter by 300 millimeter components. 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 So let's do that. I'm going to measure out 150 mils. No. Now the kerf on the standard Festool blade is 2.2 millimeters, so I want to make sure I'm going to be clearing that. And with the track saw and the stop blocks, quick work. Now we're gonna take some Super 77 spray glue. Just give it a light. Testing. Take our file. Line it up. You don't need a lot, I just want to get the the edges in particular. The two sides, the middle, and I'm missing two pieces that I go grab. Kip, you suck. Well, that was uncalled for. I'm using a scroll saw for the finer cuts, but you could use a jigsaw or hand tools. Here I'm cutting along the grid lines just for practice before cutting along the template itself. I found that lining up the pieces with my ring fingers 
and feeding the stock through with my thumbs provided the straightest cuts. Because scroll saw blades are typically stamped from a factory, you'll find yourself cutting everything at a slight angle from the burrs left on one side from that stamping process. If you're having trouble keeping a steady line, you can always err on the side of caution, leave yourself a bit of room outside the lines, and then touch it up with a bit of sandpaper afterwards. I'm using these tongue depressor sized hobby sanders to clean up the edges and make sure everything fits together well. All the holes are 6.35 millimeters or a quarter inch. With everything cut and drilled, I'll just remove the paper or sand it off if it doesn't rip off. Now I'm just test fitting everything, cleaning up the edges, making sure it fits perfectly before it gets glued up. This is a stack of quarter inch by quarter inch neodymium magnets. I've aligned all the pieces with the exteriors facing up, that way I can just plug in each magnet and maintain the correct orientation of the polarity. I'll just add a drop of CA glue to each of the magnets. Whoops. In future, I think I'll put the glue in the hole rather than trying to squirt it on top because it does leave these darkened stains on the HDF, which I'll try and take care of with sandpaper at the end. To assemble the components, I'm just using regular wood glue. This is a type bond product. I'm just using my finger as a spreader and any excess can be cleaned up quickly with a warm, wet cloth. Now I'm just getting as many clamps as I can on the uh, box to provide the pressure while the glue dries. I've also got an eighth inch thick HDF backer here where I've applied glue to the perimeter, cleverly hidden behind the box because that's what the cool YouTubers are doing these days. <laughs> Duh, winning. One hour later. Any over squeeze is easily removed with a scraper. This is not a necessary step, but I noticed there's a few gaps where I either didn't cut straight enough or I sanded too hard. And so to fill those gaps, I'm basically mixing some of the HDF sawdust with wood glue, forming a paste with the consistency of a Wendy's Frosty and smearing it into the gaps and letting that dry before sanding it off. HDF is essentially just wood fiber and glue uh, mixed together anyway, so this works out extremely well. In my big plan, this tall work in progress display is actually at the center of the overall workstation, so you're never gonna see the sides anyways, but I really wanted to try out this technique just to see how it worked, and I think it worked out fantastically. I'm really pleased with how this module turned out. If you want to make your own, the assembly sheet and the templates, they're all available for free on my website at bkmakes.com. I'll leave a link down below, along with a link to Matthias's big print application. Now, laser cutting this would be so much simpler that I hesitate to provide the DXF file just because it's so close in design to the Hobby Zone product. I'm gonna ask them if they care, if they don't, that file will be on there by the time the next module in this series gets published. And that's going to be the magnetic instruction holder that sits on top of this.
I'm out of here, man. 